Yo, what's up everyone? Uh, my name is Nar, and uh, welcome to the second video ever on my channel, Play Lion Chess. Um, in case you missed yesterday's video, uh, I had my first ever stream, so uh, glad that was a success. And um, in the, the session yesterday, I played uh, six Blitz games and went 6-0, and uh, Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. Uh, if you know, you know. So uh, yeah, that was yesterday, and... Um, welcome to my channel. Today is my second ever video and uh, what I'm about is basically I'm a, a, a guy in my early 20s. I love to play chess and I love to improve and I want to uh, share the techniques that I use to improve my game um, with all of you so that you can uh, also be inspired and uh, have concrete plans to uh, a path to improvement. Um, that's kind of the, the gist of what my channel is about. If you find that interesting, definitely feel free to uh, give me a follow both here and on YouTube, play Lion Chess. Uh, all my content is going to be geared towards helping you improve and uh, ultimately also helping myself improve. So with all that said, um, let's get right to it. Yeah, yesterday was a, a blitz session, uh, six games of blitz with analysis after each one. Uh, and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing something slightly different. Uh, I'm going to be doing a uh, chess 960 uh, game and so for those of you that don't know what chess 960 is it is uh, one of the variants of chess so it's not the standard rules of the game but it's a slightly different uh, setup that we got going on so um, before I kind of get into the details of it for those of you that are not familiar with it uh, I thought I might start with uh, some brief overview of why I wanted to do this today instead of blitz um, basically the concept that I want to emphasize is focus on different areas of my game. Um, so in the uh, games yesterday, I wanted to get a feel for the game in a specific kind of way, um, basically building confidence for the normal game of chess. And you might think I'm uh, a bit crazy to be going and playing some uh, variant of chess when my, my purported goal is to get better at the, the normal game itself. Um, but there's a reason to it, and the reason is this. Um, in Chess 960, you're able to isolate for uh, the specific piece play and familiarity familiarity with where the pieces should go and getting better at understanding, uh, basically having like a natural feel for where everything should be placed. Um, and essentially you're able to cut out all of the opening theory that is involved with, uh, with normal chess. So I think this is a good point to maybe get into what exactly Fisher 960 is. Uh, sorry, Fisher, Fisher Random or Chess 960, uh, as you can call it. And... Um, Let's get right into it. Yeah, so this is essentially uh, what Fisher Random is. Basically, it's the same as normal chess in the sense that all the pieces move the same way uh, and all the pawns are placed in the same place as well. But on the back row, the pieces are totally jumbled. Um, the only rule that needs to be followed is that the king needs to be in between the rook. And I'll get to why that's the case later. But um, basically, the pieces on the back row totally jumbled. And this leads to... Uh, basically a game that's completely new, right? Everything is totally fresh. Uh, throw all the opening theory that you know out the window because uh, things just get, you know, like crazy from the get-go. Um, so as I mentioned uh, at the very start, like the king needs to be in, in between the two rooks. And the reason for that is because in this game, you can still castle um, as in normal chess. Uh, you essentially just need to get everything that is in between the king and rook out of the way. I need to make sure that the king and rook can land up on the squares that they normally would if you were castling in a normal game. Um, so essentially that's the rule. That's basically all the rules there is to this game. The uh, reason that it's called Chess 960 is because, uh, like interestingly enough, there's 960 different starting positions, uh, which is kind of crazy, right? Like there's no way you can prepare for this game. And uh, the reason that I'm uh, other reason I'm kind of going with this approach today to do Chess 960 is because there's a fantastic tournament going on right now. If you haven't had the chance to check it out, um, it's got some of the biggest names in chess ever. Um, think guys like Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura, uh, Gary Kasparov. They're all fighting off, uh, facing off in this online tournament uh, of Chess 960. And the format's pretty interesting. They basically play uh, three games each day over the course of three days. And Essentially, they're given a position that they've never seen in their life, a Fisher 960 position. And they have three minutes to come up with the plans before they start the game. Um, and so inspired by that tournament, that's kind of what led me to do this today. And I just want to get, uh, you know, like I said, I want to get better at placing the pieces. So enough uh, enough of me blabbering and let's get right to the, to the games. Um, 
this is my uh, second stream, but uh, I mentioned yesterday's stream that I, I like to have music going on in the background just to keep things chill and uh, also to keep myself motivated. Um, so I'm going to have some music going on in the background. I have a uh, license-free music player called Pretzel, Pretzel Rocks. Um, and so I'm going to give it a go. Definitely hit me up in the chat if you have genre requests for music. I'm totally down. I, I love all kinds of music. So um, just hit me up and, and we can get right to it. Um, let me just start off. Let's see. Um, I'm feeling maybe we could go with upbeat music. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. And definitely let me know if there's any audio or video issues in the chat. Um, and let me know how your day is going. Yeah, awesome. Let's get to it. Cool, so this is my account. Um, let's just go ahead and try to create a game for this Fisher 960. Um, because I want to keep the gameplay pretty good, let's go with a five five minute uh, game with three seconds increment. So every move you make, you get three seconds back. Uh, sorry, I must create a not a standard game, but uh, a chess 960. Cool, let's get to it. And this person has a chess 960 game, 5-3, exactly the ratings that I want. Um, cool, let's get to it. So in this position, bishops are in the center, king is here. Uh, what do I notice? Uh, this all the, all the pawns are defended, and maybe let's just get right to it in the center. It's not a lot of time to think, you know, before getting right into it. There's only 20 seconds to think about all the different pieces and weak points on the opponent's uh, camp. So this is something brand new for me and let's just give it a shot. Okay, so what's he doing here? He's opening his queen, he's opening his bishop. Um, it's also just getting good central control, which is obviously something you want to do in this game. Let's go for... Some development towards the center with the knight. Okay, so he's going copycat mode on me right now, which is okay, no problem. What's the move I want to play for? I think d4 in the center would give me some nice central control. After this move, and takes and takes back, I would end up with the only central pawn and he would have a slight space disadvantage. The downside is I do give up control over this square and his queen may come out with aggressive intentions, which is not something that I would like to see. So maybe for the time being, let's... Um, what to do, what to do. As you can tell, I, my familiarity with the, the game is low and so I'm already kind of at a loss for how to play this. Okay, let's play the principled way, yeah? Let's just get the, the central control that we were talking about. Okay, he captures. This should be a, a no-brainer, capture back. And this square is covered by my bishop, so his queen cannot come out just yet. Okay, okay. He's going for the same plan that I had, um, which is to try to break down the center of the opponent and get some space for his bishops to breathe. Um, okay, so how do I want to address this? Let's maybe push the pawn up. That way I control this square and this square and this knight and this bishop struggle a bit. Uh, downside is it does give him this option here. And do I have a natural response for that? Yes, I do. I would be able to put my knight here and defend the pawn. So I don't see a reason not to play this. Quick move in response, attacking my piece. Uh, could go either here or here. Those seem the most natural so that I don't get hit with another pawn move. If I went here, he could go here. Um, this square does seem nice for my bishop, and maybe I could think about putting the knight here. Um, 
All this being said, maybe I will just go with the more natural move, defending this pawn so I don't have to worry about it dropping at any point. I'm low on time compared to him, but it's okay. I think in the beginning, really worth some time investing into making sure your position is uh, somewhat playable and all the pieces are on squares, that makes sense. If you have any experience with uh, Chess 960, Fisher Random out there, definitely let me know. I'm curious to uh, hear about that because this is one of my first times playing this variant. I don't have a ton of familiarity with it. Okay, here I see that his bishop came to a natural spot. It's eyeing down my king side. Um, let's try to... Let's try to get this in, prevent him from pushing here. Uh, pawn here and also to give my bishop some breathing room it would be really funny if I could get my king all the way over here castled you know um, so that's some of my ideas that I have that being said I think this is the good square for the bishop if I put it here it could once again run into some c4 break this move attacks this pawn but right now it's comfortably defended he adds pressure to it which is uh, natural and I'm just gonna babysit it. I'm not worried about anything like f6 because this queen is defended, so it's not like this pawn right here is in a pin. Any castles. Um, okay, this is a move that makes sense. Might be worth doing it myself? No, let's hold off for one move. And the reason being that I want to come here with some aggressive intention. Uh, maybe ask him some question, maybe give him some headache on this uh, queen side over here. And maybe is this already running into some bishop takes h7, king takes h7, knight g5, and my queen comes in, and I try to mate the dude. Could be something fun. Um, question, is it good? Uh, you know, he's not really developed with any of these pieces, so could be very, very reasonable. Okay, let's see. Takes, king takes, knight g5, king g6. Do I have a good follow-up? Probably queen g4, just to threaten some knight moves. And yeah, I'm I'm kind of liking this, so why not? You know, give him some chances to make some mistakes. Thanks for the uh, the good luck in the the chat, Snoozy. Uh, appreciate it. This is a new format of chess that I I haven't played too much. Chess 960, so. Yeah, I'm gonna need all the luck that I can get. <laughs> As you can tell, I have not done a good job of managing my time. I'm way, way down on time. But, c'est la vie. What I really want to hit him with is some uh, crazy heart, heart stopper moment where, you know, I start some attack over here and then next thing you know, my king is castled on this side of the board and all my pieces are kind of lined up for some brilliant attack. The one thing that I'm kind of scared of, I don't know, know if it's necessarily going to work out, is this pawn is very loose. So the moment my knight runs away and I try to do some attack on his king, uh, things are going to start to feel loose. Okay, so he doesn't even bother taking the piece. And should I bother saving the piece? Probably not. I think this pawn is worth a lot. So if I can keep him around, then that would be nice. But at the same time, I've weakened his king, and he can say nothing about my king the same. If he takes with this, fine. We've just traded a pawn for a pawn, but I at least get the bishop pair, and all my pieces are in good attacking position. So if he takes, I'm going to try to trade a bunch and then maybe play b3 to cover this square. Okay, so smart guy. He doesn't allow any of this. Um, he starts attacking immediately. I'm going to play bishop g5 maybe. Is this a good move? It runs into f6. And then maybe I could play bishop h4 and try to give some checkmate. Or maybe I just play knight g5 here and give checkmate. Uh... Start with this. F6, I think, uh, very clearly expected. Yep. 
Okay, move it here. And he cannot take like this because he's in a pin. This way. Let me know what type of music you guys like in the chat too. Definitely uh, open to switching it up and trying something else. So if I take like this, he has to take with the queen. Otherwise, I'm going to come in and give him checkmate. Maybe I can try playing knight g5 and come in with the queen myself. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Looks cool. Um, I do see now that he has knight f3 and if I take, he's got some checkmate tactics right here. Uh, but good news is if he plays knight f3, I can take with the knight. And then I'll just have traded some pieces. And maybe not the best state of the world, but at least I'm not getting checkmated. Okay, does not miss the beat, takes it. Okay, we trade. And now his rook is infiltrating, but I get a tempo to kick him out. Tempos are nice. And maybe on the next move I'll play bishop g3. And if he takes, then I take. And suddenly this rook is staring down his throat too. So maybe I still consider going this way. We'll see. For now he has to do something with the rook. I'm expecting rook here or here. Yep. And what next? Let's go here. Okay, this gives me the bishop pair, which is something I can work with. And now I'm going to castle. So this is a static advantage for me. I can play on either color square and he can only play on one color square. Um, but that being said, let's try to get something going in the center. Some pressure and f3 just to never have to worry about this pawn with this bishop staring down. He can probably trade a bunch of stuff in the center and have a dangerous pass pawn. But, you know, I... I think it's the lesser of evils. <laughs> Can always drop the bishop back to cover this pawn. And I'm never really at risk of like losing it straight up. Okay. Is this guy watching me? Man, how does he how does he play all the moves that I'm suggesting? Um Drop back immediately? Nah. Let's just take and not lose on time. Okay. So, this bishop is my trump, you know? He can never be contested. But this is his trump. It's a d dangerous pawn. He's just going to shove it down my throat and see what happens. All right, now I, I do have a threat. Maybe my first of the game where I can fork his rook and pawn and win it. Pawns are nice. If you can win them, try. That's my philosophy in life. Okay, he sees it. Let's just go here. Not sure what it really achieves, but at least we can keep attacking him with tempo. And now maybe I can stop babysitting this pawn, play g3, be a welcome sight. Yep. And play bishop f4 to cover this pawn here. Okay. Yeah, I raved about this pawn all game, but this bishop all game, but maybe I have some attack going right now. Uh, give them a ding, a check, and then back away. I have some sneaky tactic here. I have a checkmate threat. Okay. I do think he's running into a lot of trouble now. Um, but he does have this rook h6 move to defend stuff. So maybe all is not lost for him. No, I think this is straight up losing now. He took it. Give a check. Come in. 
So this should be technically winning for me now, but technically and actually are very different things. Okay, let's win this. Oh no, oh, I lost a piece. That should be the game. I should be losing now. Not a good start. Oh, oy oy oy. I mean, what's my only hope here? Is to get to some drawn end game, but I'm not very hopeful. Oh, that's the game. He forked my rook and king. Not a good start. Um, I was totally winning on the game, but some uh, blunder happened and I, I lost the game. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take a look. Since it's chess 960, I'm going to turn off the opening explorer and I just want to see where could I go better. Um, obviously there's a clear answer to that when I uh, went totally berserk and just like lost everything at the end. But I'm sure there's some improvements earlier on as well. Thanks for the encouragement in the chat, Snoozy Singh. I appreciate it. Uh, bit of a rough start for me after going 6-0 yesterday, 6-0. Um, like Michael Jordan in uh, the NBA Finals. If you know, you know. Um, but today has been a yeah, been a bad start, and looks like at the end, yeah, after I lost that piece, there was really no hope for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes it happens. It's a blitz game, so. All right, let's just get started looking at this. Um, there should be an evaluation up here. The number up here, if it's positive, it means that white is slightly better. If it's negative, it means black is slightly better. And if it's like zero, zero, it means that um, it's about equal. So let's get started. E4 it likes, E5. Nothing too, too bad about this start. Uh, it does not like this at all. Okay, it's starting to like it more. I guess, yeah, the response is a little too clean, but this is a nice idea. F4, yeah? You just open up the area of your king because you're gonna get castled really quickly and your queen can get super, super active right out the ga right out the, the gates. So it's a nice idea to be aware of. And again, I'm not analyzing this to understand the opening better or anything. Like, I'm never gonna see the same configuration of pieces. I just wanna get a feel for like, did I do things in the opening that kind of made sense? And so far what I'm seeing is not, nothing too horrible has happened out of the opening. Yeah, this knight can always use the c4 square. Uh, troubled me a lot. Queen e2. Uh, it just wants me to... Let's just check this variation real quick. Bishop d2 wants him to take. Or what will happen if he takes, rather. I guess he's just giving up the, the bishop pair for no reason. I mean, he gets a pawn out of it, but in this case, probably not worth it. I get all my pieces in with development, with tempo rather, and they should be very happy to play this. Um, so let's try it. Castles. Yeah, a keen eye, I guess. This bishop takes h7 stuff really good. It works. Um, yeah, not much to say. I'm I'm pretty happy about myself seeing that, and from here maybe I chickened out too much. No, no, it likes everything I'm doing, and this is pretty fun. Just your bishop is hanging, doesn't matter. You're gonna threaten some checkmate over here. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is just equal. Nothing to be said here. Yeah, apparently this is not even sound. You can just take it, and somehow hide out. Let's just check that variation. This was my plan to go queen h5, king here, and I guess if I give this check, what happens? Yeah, I mean, my queen can never come here, it's covered. There's no way for me to deliver the decisive blow, and if I can't, then I'm just down a piece, so makes sense. So this is all just equal, yeah, not much to be said. Bishop e5, he gave up the bishop pair for no reason. I was quite happy to see it. And it likes my play. Let's just fast forward a bit. Bishop f1, it didn't like it. Uh, okay, okay, this pawn rook hanging thing was there for a while. 
Let's just fast forward a bit more. Another mistake right here. This is something I saw very briefly in a, like a fleeting second in the game. I could put my bishop here and attack these two, but I saw it a bit too late. I saw it after, uh, right here, at which point I, I didn't have this anymore. Because if I take, take, the rook and rook are not, no longer diagonally um, like adjacent in a way. So, okay. I mean, I'm still better, but some more inaccuracies here. And just uh, yeah, a nightmare thing in tr in time trouble. And was I winning here? This is kind of sad to see. Uh, totally, totally winning. And after e2, what's the move? How do I finish him? Okay, rook here. Ah, uh, okay. This is just a favorable version because if he trades the rooks, he's got no way to I don't know patch this area, just diagonal up. He's just gonna lose a another. Uh, exchange clean and it'll be over. Uh, what is this song? The song is Aglet by... Never? Never by Aglet? I'm not sure who that is. Uh, Phineas and Ferb? What is it, what has it got to do with Phineas and Ferb? Please uh, let me know in the chat. Yeah, I, I'd love to know. Pretty cool. I'm a big fan of uh, Perry the Platypus. Alright. And yeah, just nothing to be said right here. I just made a one move mistake, you know, he moved his king out of the way and I was like, okay, what does this move do? I can still take this pawn and from there I was just, you know, I lost to rook for nothing. So yeah, pretty, pretty sad ending, but decent game. Let's go back and play another one. Okay. I mean, I guess we'll play the same guy. Let's see what happens. He outrates me by 200, 300 points now. So, let's see. Let me know how the quality is in the, the video as well. I see some frames dropped. Let me know in the chat, yeah? Um. Okay, bishops, nice, aggressive. And weak points, none to be seen. Um, let's just get central control for myself as well. What about my king? I think... Yeah, I think it's just easier to get my king over here. It'd be nice. Um, let's play here. He, has, he probably wants his king here as well, so I can just get him some pressure. Say, okay, are you ever comfortable with this bishop staring down your uh, throat? And centralize the knight. It's always good. As crazy as it seems, you know, all my pieces on the queen side are almost out, so I'm close to castling this way. I say queen side. Queen could be anywhere, but in normal chess, this would be the where the queen uh, would be on this side, and the king would be this way. It's eight o'clock. What to do? What other kids shows do you guys like? Phineas and Ferb? I remember from my childhood I used to watch a lot of um, a lot of Blue's Clues, a lot of Spongebob. Spongebob's a classic, right? You can watch it whenever, however old you are. Uh, and people only think you're slightly weird, but... Yeah, Phineas and Ferb was a good one too. I don't know, um, this position as for the position, maybe just make some semi-active move with the queen and say, haha, I got my queen to a nice square, you didn't. Uh, I mean, you can always bother me here, put some pressure with knight e5, and who knows. You know, I'm one step away from going this side, so maybe I can just start some crazy attack over here. Could be nice. He can't go like this because the square is covered. 
What is that move? That's super, super cryptic. I have no idea what that move is doing. Um, bizarre. So now this knight has a defensive responsibility. So for the time being, let's just go here and prepare some, some break over here. Ah, okay. So that move was preparing castling. Um, okay. I will say I'm kind of happy to see all of this. Now I can go just on some attack over here. My rook is already right lined up with his king. Whereas on this side, there's not clearly any some attack. Um, there's not any clear attack right off the bat. Okay, let's get the plan in action, you know? Open up these fouls on his king. Maybe he put some pressure. So just continue? Why not? You know, it's defended enough times. Let's give this guy some stress. Okay, I would like to open up some files, so is now the time? Well, I can do it at whatever point I want, so maybe I build up some more attack. Let's do that. Sounds like a plan. Uh, I can plant my knight here or here at the right time. Let's take it now. And then play knight to e4 with some some idea to maybe play knight c3. reason I want to go with this knight and not this knight is because this knight has a defensive responsibility to watch over this square right here. And if I can get my knight here, it's a fork, so he's forced to give up his defensive bishop. And, well, that is a defensive bishop for a reason, right? He's going to have a lot of weak squares around his king, a lot of weak dark squares that I could make use of. This pawn, luckily, is guarded by this rook, so queen is not going to win it anytime. So he covers the square, but he puts this rook at a very, very ugly spot. Might have temporarily some idea right here, you know? Um, okay, so he attacks it. Now is the question, like, should I go in? It forces the, the capture. Why not, you know? I love it. I love it. Bye-bye defensive bishop and hello mating chances. Also some idea like this. Yeah, his attack is not materialized at all. And I have some chances. So what I want to get is, I want to get this queen back in real quick. Zero to a hundred. You know what I'm saying? It looks really slow, but there's a faster way to do it. If you just go like, uh, like this, this, and then this. Boom. Checkmate. He's not going to, he's not going to allow it. He's pretty good. Uh, he'll see it for sure. Go for it, yo. Only live once. Even on the clock. Yeah, he can break the center or whatever, but you know, it doesn't matter, right? If the guy gets mated, he gets mated. His queen is now slower to get over there too. I mean, I'm anticipating that he probably won't have a choice but to give up his rook. Not something you want to do. He probably froze in his tracks once he saw this threat, but question is, does he have a good way to deal with it? Maybe he can do 
I mean, the problem is, like, he has to get the square available, too, if he could put the knight there and then guard. But, out of the question. Okay, now this plan gains in strength, because all this stuff will come with tempo over here, if I can get it in. Okay. Let's try to break it, out, break it down over here. And don't ever forget this plan, you know? You have some plans, but don't forget the plans you created earlier. What's this? Uh, he's attacking this. Yeah, let's just babysit it. Why not? This is pretty nice. Also clears the way for the rook if he wants to do something over there. Okay, now this move... I don't want to waste the tempo with this if I have to capture here anyway. Yeah, I mean, how bad could this be, right? I mean, I'm losing a pawn, but probably going to give mate if he takes it. Oh, no, probably. I am giving mate. Um, okay. No problem, no problem. I see tactics. Take take, take, queen a5, king b1, c2, and whoops, there goes your queen. Let's try it. I mean, there's tactics in the air, but it all comes out of the fact that he didn't have an attack going on my king, and I had one going on his king, so makes sense. So of course, he doesn't take, taking would lose. Can I do something like take here? And then keep everything in there, make him calculate everything. Okay, I have to calculate captures, push, other stuff. I think captures, captures, and bishop b3 is a threat. He can't let me get that active with all my pieces. Yeah, let me know in the Twitch chat if you guys see any issues with my quality. Um, I upped the resolution yesterday so that the quality of the video would be better, but I'm seeing some skipped frames here, um, so I'm not sure what that's about. Okay, I also have this thread here where I take, and then rook b2, come in, uh, and play queen b6 next, I think. And I'm threatening to threatening to play this and win the queen. I think that's pretty bad. You can't just like take a pawn or something. Okay, he pushes. And where's the win? Okay, push this pawn so I never have to worry about losing it. And then rook b1 is still the threat next. And why not do it now? Get out of the way of my queen being attacked while simultaneously continuing to put pressure here. And checkmate's close, can smell it. Resigns. Okay, yeah, that was a good one. Uh, pretty happy with how that one went. Uh, gonna take a quick look at it in the chat, or sorry, in the analysis tool again. Fantastic Robotique by Zircon is playing. By the way, if you missed it at the beginning, I mentioned what I'm playing the music out of is this Pretzel Rocks. It's this um, license-free music uh, streaming software. I, I am on Spotify. I usually use Spotify, but for the live streaming purposes, I play off of here. It's got some like, I don't know, feels like it should be like a Charlie Chaplin movie or something. So opening looks good for both of us. So far. Plans look good. Yeah, both kind of just centralizing pieces.
And yeah, nothing too much to be said so far. Yeah, I don't know what this move was at first. Um, I was like, this is the most mysterious move I've ever seen. But point is, in order to castle in 960, his king would need to be here and his rook would need to jump one square over. So he needs this square free if he wants to castle this way. So this is the start of an attack on his king, and yeah, he's slowly drifting away, right? This knight doesn't do much here. I mean, it puts some pressure here, but it's got a lot of defense, and he's one step away from attacking it a third time. And even if challenged, I can always push, but I'm forcibly opening stuff up here, and the move that I played I think is good. It clarifies the situation in the center. Okay, so something better here. Okay, all right, this is a pretty cute tactic. If I play g5, oops, your knight doesn't have anywhere to go. Can't go here, because that's covered by my knight and my queen, and all the other squares are taken. So this is kind of like yesterday, there was some cute knight trap uh, in a blitz game. This is another cute knight trap. All the squares are covered and he's toast, you know? It's always a little scary to do this in front of your own king, just like open up files voluntarily, but a piece is a piece. Yeah, I mean, this tactic was available for several moves, but I missed it. Okay. I mean, it's there again. It's screaming at me to play this. Oh man, I need to listen, you know? But... What I played is practically very uncomfortable to face, and let's see what is the right move. Because King A2 just walks into even more threats. Uh, the correct move here is Queen E1. Cute tactics are the best tactics. Good, uh, good saying to live your life by. Oh my goodness, more cute tactics on the board. I would have to take, and take, and then push. And whoops, you're forked. You're done forked up. Okay, queen here, queen deer, queen d8, rook a1, a5, and yeah, not much to be said, I'm just breaking through right here. All this like fake breaking open the center is, you know, moot, right? He's gonna get mated. And the line that I was talking about in the game is, if he captures here, queen, get go queen goes here, and he's forced to go here, only move, and... I can play, what I was thinking in the game is I'll play here, and I unleash some attack over here. But yeah, even better is just taking straight up and saying, you're toast. You, you're just totally like, you have no shelter anymore. A king with no home. Cool. Glad to hear the video quality looks good and the frames are not dropping as well for you. Let me know at any point if, yeah, the frames are not good. Um, can always down downplay the resolution at any point. Okay, not much more to see here. I mean, guy just got brutally mated and resigned before he got mated, but. Okay, two games under the, under the river, is that a phrase? Under the bridge? Nah. Two games in the pocket, onto the third. All right, let's play this guy, Kung Fu Panda Chess. Never heard of it? What are you uh, talking about, the song? Making up my own phrases, come on man, you know I don't do that. Okay, weak points. Um, no weak points, this one's weak. Let's attack it right out the bat. Maybe he misses it? Boom, boom. Capturing a, mook, a, a rook by move two. Let's see if it happens. Oh my god. He's toast. He missed it. He's toast. We see resigns. Move two resigns. What phrase are you talking about? I'm not sure what I made up.
yeah, I'm definitely liking this music that's playing. Um, generally, like a good selection of different types of genres and stuff. And pretty good. Under the river. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's bogus. I just made it up. You're right. Okay, he's attacking this. Defend it, maybe? Maybe I should have played this so I can get the bishop out and start thinking about castling. I don't want to castle this way. Uh, maybe he gets some attack. I mean, if I were him, I'd kind of lash out here. I would think that's your only hope. You can't play something quiet because I have a static advantage that will last the whole game. Let's get this in. Play here. Keep ourselves flexible which way we want to go. Smart guy. Um, play this. He might play this. Annoy me a bit. Where do I need my king and rook? My king would be here and my rook would be here if I castle. So I just need to get this guy out of the way. He could start lining up some attack, you know? It's always scary. But for the time being, what to do? Queen e2. Watches over this. Gets one more piece out of the way so I can go that way. I could even think about trading off more pieces. Okay, now it gains in strength because he can't capture this way. Okay. It's moving quickly, you know, it's kind of irritating, but uh, he does have some threat. Yeah, he's done a good job of recalibrating after start. Also, gotta watch out for some bishop landing here, you know, and destroying my day. It would be a skewer. I just want to see him commit with the king, and then we'll decide what we want to do. Yeah, I'm not scared of takes. I just take back, and there goes your jumping point. Everything's out of the way. I can go whichever way. Let me know in the chat what you think I should do. Go left, go right. Big choices, big decisions. Okay, what's this move? This is just not a free pawn. I like me some free pawns, you know? Tasty snack. Kung Fu Panda. Playing with aggressive intentions, as you would expect from the Kung Fu Panda. What to do? Um, yeah, baby step it. Man, just decide what you want to do with your king. I'm scared of sitting in the center the whole time. Okay. What to do, what to do. Hmm. Should we go on an adventure? Adventures are fun. Por que no los dos? Well, I wish I could go both ways. Maybe I could castle one way and then just like walk over, do, do, do. That's pretty fun. Okay, so he says, I'm not castling today. Um, all right. I mean, eh, there's probably not an attack here. Let's just castle. I'm also threatening this pawn. Should follow my advice and just win some pawns, you know? Also, this is a 3-2 game, so just to be mindful of the clock so I don't lose. Oh, boy. This came out of nowhere. Uh... <clears throat> what to do? Alright. I'm terrified now. Please don't mate me. I mean, the good news is I have some pressure here, so... Queen can't get too happy jumping around the place. Maybe I could even trade the queens. This is a an arrangement that sets myself up for that, I think. Okay. And if he has some take, take. Okay, he doesn't do it. Run free and dive into the sky. Are you gonna go for it?
This is my plan. Trade the queens. I can't lose that, I don't think. If the queens are off the board. Okay. I'm in. It ruins my pawns over here, but... If you win, you win. There's no style points. Fork? He allows it. Kung Fu Panda, you gotta watch out for the forks. I should come up with some celebration for my wins. This was a 22 move game. Beat up the Kung Fu Panda with some aggressive Kung Fu of my, my own. Let's see. Yeah, I think this one was just lost from move two, man. You can't lose a rook on move two. That's the thing about this game. You gotta always watch out. What are the points that are undefended right out the ba right out the gates? You know, used to right here, right here. Okay, I'll give this one a quick look, and maybe I'll just even take a look at this guy. If there's no clear gaping holes, I think there's not much to check in this one. I'm vibing with the music, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, really not much to be said here. This is pretty clean, right? I'm not losing ever, and as long as I don't let any huge advantage slip, um, which I don't so far. And yeah, as you can tell, there's like pretty clean. There's one point where I made a mistake, allowing knight takes c4, and I should just take. Apparently, this is a bluff. What if he does this? Yeah, I mean, you can do something like this and this, but. I mean, what army is he mating me with? He just has a queen out here. You can't you can't just mate the opponent with just a queen. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, something to keep in mind. Your opponent makes a threat, quote-unquote, and it's maybe not necessarily a threat. So, okay. Let's get into the next one. I'm, so far, if you're keeping track at home, 2-1 and one today. Can't get to my 6-0 and oh, Michael Jordan. Maybe I can get to 3-6 and six, like LeBron, but... Hopefully not. <laughs> All right. Nobody else playing it right now. Big basketball fan. That's me. Okay. Let's quickly identify weak points. This is a weak point. No defense. Uh, get central control. And bishops seem pretty natural. Let's start with this move. It opens up this bishop's eyes. It does walk into some, like, queen coming here and pestering me, though. Okay. I want to put... I want to put my king uh, probably over here. On this side, it's a little scary. So let's get right into that. Maybe play some like h3, bishop h2, almost like it's some London system. Probably this is a waste. I shouldn't be playing this on move 3. Oh my god. I fell for the same tactic the last dude fell for. Oh my god. This is horrible. I mean, what person does that? You literally executed the same thing and got mad at your... Or not got mad, but like... Told your opponent that he shouldn't have done that. Okay, anyway, he didn't have to do this. I wasn't threatening anything because he could just trap my queen. Ugh, oi oi oi. I mean, I'm just toast. There's no hope. Oh, 
I mean, yeah, I have very little hopes for this. There's no basketball emoji, but football will have to suffice. Yeah, this is a nightmare game. I mean, there's some wild chance that maybe I come up with something great. I'm sure if I was really good, I could find a way. Yeah, well, I just want to unleash this queen, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if some caveman approach worked. He's not going for it. Yeah. Maybe just break in the center. I mean, create a one move threat. See what happens. That's what I have to resort to. Not a game to write to home about. Alright, but enough whining. Let's try to win the game. C5. Okay, let's try to create some break in the center. He can't castle this way very comfortably. Maybe he can. Oh, I mean, no, because this king would end up here, which is covered. Oh. Oh, no. He has this. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't do it. Thank you. I mean, he's just going to push. Super Mario Land Remix. I don't understand. Is this, is this music actually from Super Mario Brothers game then? Mario Kart? I'm a big uh, Mario Kart fan. Not as much of a, a Super Smash Bros, but uh, Mario Kart is a good time. Let's try to line something up. Okay. Seems weird, why'd you push twice? But uh, I now that he's put his knight there, I don't want to give him a good square. And he doesn't have the choice to go up. I mean, this is not a terrible position. Like I have this also. If I could see it and not be dumb. I think I've had it for two moves now. No, one move. Okay. I mean, yeah, I was never going to take here because he had this move right now. So now it's a threat if he didn't see it. Well, my knight has some nice jumping points. Bishop could come out. Sorry, bishop could come out. He sees the threat. It's a good thing to see threats. Um... <clears throat> Let's play some nondescript move that makes him think there's some tactic. I really just want to get my files open for my rook. I, I can't afford to give this up, you know? This is my beautiful knight. It's what keeps the threats alive. It's defended. Didn't drop it. There's no knight fork, unfortunately, because this bishop is here. But a bishop can't go somewhere if it wanted to. Maybe we try to lure the bishop somewhere? How though?
I'm okay trading some pieces because it creates some threats. Go here with the knight. Yeah, maybe I'm just walking right into this. Uh. I'll just come out like a piece down, I think. And there's no like checkmate threat on the back row. And no way to exploit his temporarily bad pieces. I'm just down a piece and a pawn. Only hope is to get some active pieces. If he plays over, nope. He's threatening to plant a knight in there. Be my guest. I'm gonna go after your pawns. To centralize. No concrete threat. Oh, my God. I'm losing. Yeah, I'm losing this. He doesn't have a great fork that'll end me on the spot, so just take it. A discovered fork, that is. Or sorry, discovery. Yeah. There's a threat right now. I expect knight f4, yeah. Keep attacking him. Don't give him a chance. If I could get some trick like this, that would be nice. It'd be something like queen c7. Yeah, queen b8 also good. Just be a bother. That's my <clears throat> philosophy here. And I do believe I'm taking this pawn next for free. He can't take this way. Because I take, uh, okay, he has some idea to go here, here, but am I not attacking this? He just can't go on an expedition. Somehow I may be able to draw it. If he goes queen here, I come back. I don't make the mistake of going up because then he could take with check. And, well, I'm down a bunch of pawns. Mm, it's going to be hard to win it. Well, he doesn't start trading stuff, which is nice for me because I can start winning stuff. Yeah, yeah, I guess you have some checkmating uh, threats. Show me. Maybe this followed by this. Just neutralize the piece. And oh no 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 no. If he takes it, I have checkmate threat. Well, let's see if he somehow bites. This threat is always in the air now. He can't take any of the open files. If I could draw this, that would be Fantastic. Entry point covered. He has to do something about this. He has to give either a check or move it away.
Me too. Could be annoying. I have time, you know? He has to deal with his back rank issue. For the time being, I can create a 3 versus 2 game. Yeah, and after saying all that, I can't. I'm not able to. I'm just down a bunch of bonds. Alright, yeah, we're gonna give this maybe a little bit. If he doesn't blunder anything, I'll just resign. This work has to go passive. Maybe I have something. Some idea of checkmate. I'm generally playing quick because I have very little hopes of winning this, or even drawing it. I just want to ask him some tough questions. King over, look up. Take. Let's win this one maybe. Alright, this is hopeless. I don't know why I'm playing this still. Yeah, I should resign. Okay. Well played, stubborn be Beetlejuice. I, uh, yeah, I mean, don't think there's too much to look at here. I mean, I can give a quick analysis to see if I missed any big chances, but yeah, I fell for the same exact trap that the last guy fell for against me. I just allowed this bishop takes in the corner and takes my rook. This is chess 960, if you're just tuning in, and all the pieces on the back row kind of like jumbled up. So opening theory goes out the window and you just try to play some uh, natural chess, put your pieces on good squares. I'm just going to let this thing do its thing and I'll just check the big moments of the game. So, not going to click through everything. Just give me a minute of downtime um, to ask you guys in the chat how, you guys, how your day is going. Let me know. Um, I'm a streamer focused on improving my own game at chess and I'll be mostly active on the weekends. And I'll focus on many, many different types of training techniques involved with both the end game, middle game, opening, tactics, whatever you want. Um, I'll be working on it. And yeah, just pop in whenever you want. Give me a follow uh, here on, here and on YouTube for uh, updates on both the content. And I'm yeah, just going to be playing some chill music and playing chess, uh, mainly on the weekends. Yeah. Thanks for the support in the chat, Snoozy. Appreciate it. This was a nightmare game. For me, I botched it out of the opening. But we live and we learn, you know? It's a mistake that you can make once, you can make twice, but the third time you make it, then you're not really learning. First and second times is part of your training reps, so. Um, yeah, I mean, generally, like a, a learning experience more than anything. Thanks, Snoozy, for the uh, the drop in the chat. Good day, novice at chess. Excited for you to be on this journey with me to improvement. And the move I should play here is c4. Just cover the square. 
and make sure that he can't take. Let's look for opportunities. Knight d6 gave me a chance to play this tactic. And if he moves, simply. I'm crushing with some take here. And if he takes, simply, then what? Wow. This is cute. See that? There's always something. Don't ever hang your head because there's some uh, tricks in the position with Fisher 960. It's chess 960, I should say. This trick was available for a few moves. Now there's a slightly different trick. D4, E4. What's the big idea? Uh huh. Now you jump. You're threatening here. He defends. What's this about? 92. I guess I'm not sure what I see in this position that says that being down in exchange gives me hope, but maybe it's this queen, this knight being on a good post, bishop eyeing down on the rook, and another chance for me. C5 gives me a chance to break in the center immediately. Should have jumped on this. You know, I'm castled. He isn't. Let's attack. Uh, once again, another chance. Yeah, here I'm. Here I'm okay. I'm doing okay. All my pieces are getting to good squares. But, yeah, I went for this exchange. Let me just pull it up right here. Yeah, I got my pieces lined up in a bad way and was forced to drop some material, so... That was the end of the game, I would say. Although I did keep some chances I stuck around, but you can only do so much when you're down a lot of material. Let me know what you guys think about this Chess 960 format. Um, definitely pretty interesting to me. My skill level way, way lower than like normal chess, but um, pretty interesting stuff. There's a lot of crazy havoc right out of the opening. 2-0, yeah, I'm not gonna play 2-0, that's too short. I feel I might lose on time. I'll maybe give it like one or two more games and then probably wrap up for the day, in case you're wondering. Okay, 1560, 2-0. Let's play a 5-3 maybe. My rating's only 1600 on this, which is much, much lower than my normal rating. But it's been a tough day for just 960. Got paired up though, against a 1500. Place e4 immediately. I mean, like, don't you need to think? I don't get it. Sicilian? I'm attacking here. By the way, but yeah, he parries the threat, but I'm quite happy with this diagonal and this diagonal being controlled. As I was saying that I was thinking about b6, but allows me to get kicked. What to do? Um, develop my own guy, maybe? B5. Nah, I'll just put A6 first. Okay, you gotta be really careful about your king in these games. You can get trapped early on. In the center. Um, so let me pay some attention to that and castle right away. Let's do it. Walking into some attack, maybe, eventually. Annoy this piece.
Maybe annoy him some more. I mean, you can't just keep making one move threats. You can do a dodge it. How to get my pieces in play. He's got a beautiful center. I don't have a good answer to any of these questions. Play this, threaten this pawn. I'm fine with this. Winning a pawn is nice. And trading some pieces so that my pieces that remain are the ones that are the good ones. Okay. Fair enough. Go win a pawn. I don't mind. You're really opening up lines against your pawns. You don't even want the pawn, okay? Bishop c6. And I guess I can play here and prevent that move. I want to play this next, if you allow me. Yeah, let's do it. Although, why did I do this? I've just closed my own piece. Um, let's just take... This is covered, right here. Queen is hanging. This pawn is pawn that I won. So, can we keep it that way? I think not. I think let's just get our pieces in good squares. And maybe threatening a pawn now. He lets me take it. I don't see anything wrong with it, but also does give him some activity here. I don't have a bishop to counteract that bishop, so should be wary. Um, maybe play knight f4. Uh, no, 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 no. This piece is hanging. Okay. After taking here, I will be up a couple pawns. I'm up two pawns. And this pawn is hanging currently. And yeah, luckily I didn't get my knight trapped. So let's get him to the best square in the position. Close this up, this file. Okay. Let's be real quick to get him there. He can never be challenged. There's no pawn that can come there and bother him. Okay, you can't get here, and this square is covered. Let's just go give my king some space to breathe. Trade, okay. And I can play here. This pawn is defended for now. Okay. Yeah, it should be a winning endgame, but technique is required to convert it. Push up can take three moves before he can attack this pawn with this knight. It's a nice thing to know with this configuration. Threat. Let's trade a piece. I'd love that. Time to get our pieces active. How is he up so much time? This guy's playing on basically pre-move the whole game. Yeah, now my knights are just so stable. I love my position. I'm just up two pawns and cruising. What to do? Let's get the king. And be wary, there's some bishop f8 maybe. Okay, I can't take it just yet. So h5, so I'm not threatened by any of this stuff. Have to take this way, otherwise I lose a pawn. But this is not scary anymore. Okay. Yeah, this is defended and I can just 
slowly been making it and should be winning. Yeah, this is pretty clean now. I just get the king out of the way and push and just get this square covered. Second queen. Got a baby queen on the loose. Grab. And let's get that baby queen moving, you know? Play here so that if he takes. Um, well, I have this all covered. And he won't be able to make a queen really fast. I'll be faster. He goes there, and I get the queen with check. So this guy's never running. Yeah, pretty pretty good game. I was happy with this one. Gained 50 points from it. That's the thing at the beginning. Your rating is so volatile. So let's give it a look. And after this, I'll probably be playing one more. So let me know if you have any thoughts on this format and um, what you want to see uh, in the future. Yeah, let me know and follow for more content for sure. Thanks for the encouragement in the chat. Appreciate it. This felt like a good clean win on my part, so pretty happy with it. Gotta stay hydrated. The thing they don't tell you about streaming is, um, yeah, your mouth gets really dry really quickly, so I have like seven or eight bottles here just to keep myself hydrated. And yeah, I'm learning a lot from these games, these Chess 960 games. Super duper fun format. Uh, it was inspired by this tournament going on right now, uh, the Chess 9 LX tournament in St. Louis, or sponsored by the St. Louis Chess Club. And they're playing Chess 960, and it's a really cool variant. If you haven't yet played it, give it a shot. It's really cool. All the pieces on the back rank are jumbled up at the start of the game. So you get to get these really, really wild positions right out of the opening and just learn a ton from it. And just stuff goes crazy, like right out the gates. Let me know how your day's going, everyone that's out there. Yeah, let me know. And uh, I'm a chess streamer focused on improving at chess and getting better and sharing my training techniques with you guys. This is one of the training techniques I use. It's called Chess 960. Helps me focus on good piece play and understanding where pieces belong. And basically takes all the opening theory out of the equation. So just analyzing the game that I played. Um, nothing too special here out of the opening. He was slightly better with this really, really strong pawn center. And I was scared about how to challenge it. But apparently my approach was good, aside from some blunder here, where yes, I, I realized at some point he could play here, and you know, all my pieces are gonna end up in really, really ugly spots at the end of this, you know? I'm not even castled. It looks like I'm castled. Oh, sorry, I am castled. Um, but his pieces are so much more aggressive than mine, and you know, what is this guy doing over here? What is this guy doing here? All on the back rank. It's not a good look for uh, Team Black here. But yeah, he missed his chance and played something a little bit more, well, a lot worse. Gave me a free pawn for the bishop pair. Um, but the bishop pair is maybe not so much felt, even though he has a bishop staring down my throat. Uh, a pawn is a pawn, and this pawn was really menacing, so not just any pawn. And from there, yeah, just a clean, clean win, I would say. Um, not much to be said. Yeah, a lot of pieces came off the board, and... Yeah, I just got to some end game here. Let's get let's fast forward where I'm up two pawns and I'm able to create one pass pawn over here and one pawn up over here. And just with some technique brought my king into the fray. Um, so maybe take a look around this point. My plan was just to go like go in a march basically somewhere here and promote this baby queen. And was basically able to do exactly that, yeah. He traded one pair of knights and and my plan is very simple, just uh, control the squares in front of this pawn with my knight and push this pawn as the king is forced back. 
and pretty nice finish to the game. Let me know what you think of the format. Yeah. I'm definitely pretty excited to, to be playing my first Chess 960 session here. And this one will be my last one, I think. It's getting to be a little bit late here uh, in the United States where I'm at. But I'm going to play one last one and let's play Mandracon, a 3-1 game. So three minutes to make all your moves with one second added every move. Uh, right out the gates, what do I see? I see bishops that want to stare down the long diagonal. So let's get right to it. King feels probably safer on this side of the board. Yeah, I'm going to follow this guy's moves because he's opening those up real quick. He opens up the center. Okay, natural. Let's take it. And how do I want to contest this? Maybe I play knight d6 to bother this bishop. Okay, and then play knight c6. And yeah, my pieces all look like they're in a decent spot. I don't have great central control with my pawns just yet, but uh, let's start some aggressive stuff over here. I want to get my queen also out. That's the other part. So he allows me to come out with the bishop. Also, this is a pawn, no? A free pawn. I don't think you can play like this. Um, definitely seems scary. If he castles here, he goes there. Okay. And I'm a couple moves from castling, but we can stop him from castling. Just play rook there. And what is he doing about this? It seems like I am just going to be able to play bishop e6, cover this check, and castle next. And I'm just a healthy pawn up. And I have the bishop, don't forget. Okay, this is sacrificing this pawn to get some queen in the attack, but I have no need to take. I can also play here and start considering going the other way, but let's baby step first. Okay, let's get this queen active now. And I am one step away from going this way now. Let's do it. Knight d3. So now I, I do have this king in a bit of a awkward spot, you know? He's always a little bit uncomfortable. And bishop moves now are a threat. Okay, so now this already should be winning the queen, no? I have this square covered. I have this square covered with the bishop. So if I just move the bishop all the way back, is he not just trapped with the queen? It's nine o'clock. I think so. I think he has to go insane and just do some stuff like that. But a piece is a piece. This is my philosophy. If you can win a piece, win it. Okay, what is this? I mean, it's just a piece. Get active with this guy. Maybe some idea putting pressure here. I mean, this has to be resigned in a couple moves, right? I can maybe even play queen here, threaten this. If he pushes queen a1, checkmate, exclam. Resigns. Broke, broke 1700 with this last game. Pretty cool. Um, like I said, this one will be my last game. Uh, sorry, this one was my last game. Um, and take a quick look at it. I don't think there's too much to be said. Yeah, he just lost the pawn early in the opening, which I think was devastating. He just couldn't come back from that. Pretty exciting stuff. This is my first weekend streaming. Stream yesterday with the Blitz session, stream today with just 960, and all in all, been pretty good. There were some hiccups with the uh, quality of the stream yesterday, but um, in general, the gameplay yesterday was really nice. Uh, I played great games, I learned a lot. 
today has been more focused on the learning as opposed to the great games part because I've lost a few, more than a few. Uh, I think I went maybe three and three on the day. But yeah, these games are really quick sometimes because just decided by some opening mistake and you're just toast after that point. But a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff with regards to like the piece position and play uh, in 960. So not too much to say about the opening, yeah, it's just pretty standard stuff, getting the pieces in. Not necessarily a position where you need to control the center with your pawns, reason being uh, that you don't want to take the eyes of the bishop uh, and essentially close them up with your own pawns, right? You want to keep these bishops wide open and develop your pieces in a way that control the center. So sometimes the piece will take the role of the pawn and control the central squares. So that's a pretty interesting thing I found out of this game. A5 was a bit rash because you don't know where the king is going. I was scared. I was like, how is this queen ever going to get to play if I don't get this pawn rolling? But better was instead knight d4 to just ask a question here and maybe play some c6 plan with b6 following. Which is pretty cool. This is just a pawn, yeah. Not sure what he was really planning with this. And not much to say after that. He just... Yeah, this is already significantly worse. Not just slightly worse. Because not only did he lose the pawn, but... Look at these bishops. They're just nightmares to work with. And his king can never... I mean, it's like... I don't know, like a thousand moves from being castled over here. He's not going to get castled. And um, yeah. Like, like you said in the chat, Snoozy. I appreciate it. This was a... Super, super clean last game. Really happy with how this one went. Um, yeah, and as you can tell by the uh, the graph here at the bottom, which tells you how it went over time, Black just really, really took over and never let, let it go in this one. Broke 1700 with this one, and let's just give our profile a quick look to see how, how we did on the day. So I played six games today, and I got four wins and two losses. So four and two is not Michael Jordan level, but Definitely not as, uh, not LeBron level either, so there's that. And yeah, I mean, generally happy with today's games. 960 is a pretty fun format. Give it a shot if you uh, are looking for some fun variant to play that also will help you focus on improving a certain area of game. And that area um, specifically is like peace play. So cool. With that said, I think that'll be a wrap for today. Um, and yeah, you can definitely expect more content from me. Uh, next weekend, but also there may be some spontaneous uh, lion chess appearances during the week. So keep your eye out and I'm going to wrap that up for today. Peace.